Welcome back to stage two here at Minehead. We've been treated to some very decent stuff so far, none more so than the opening performance by Andrew Gilding when he averaged in three figures, the only player to do so on this stage so far. And Russ Bray wants to get Dirk van Dijvenbode and Mickey Mansell on with this. Both of them messing around a little bit in preparing for their stuff. Mickey Mantle is known as a bit of a slow player. For a man nicknamed the Cyclone, he really doesn't live up to that, does he? Dirk van Dijvenbode, a more explosive talent, but he can be stop-start. We just saw a very strong performance from, from Jose de Sosa. We actually mentioned Dirk earlier on, Paul, because of his position in the draw. And he will face, if he does go through, the winner of the match that we witnessed earlier between Daryl Gurney and Keegan Brown. So it could be Gurney against Van Dijvenbode, or it could be a meeting between two Northern Irishmen. Yeah, interesting times ahead. Bit of a conflab happening between these two now. I think it's because Dirk is adamant that the board isn't straight. He's incredibly strong willed as Dirk. And if he thinks it's not straight, he'll want to have it turned, but he's got to have the agreement of the referee and the other player. We top left. That's what what Mickey says. You can take the man out of Northern Ireland, but you can't take the Northern Ireland out of the man. You've got to love him. Well, I'm going to ask you a question now, Paul. If one player thinks the board is not right and the other one says I think it is right then the ruling is that it stays where it is is that correct? Correct. So if your opponent decides that they don't think it's right would it be a nice little trick for you to say well actually even if you do think it's wrong do you know what leave it depends how you want to approach it but you can go formal protest if you want and the tournament director Graham Fairhurst could be brought into play but you don't want to do that you had to play darts get on with it well all the build up has finished the board is set straight truly in this day and age there's a device to make sure that it's always in perfect position They've got these little spirit level things that they put in the in the 20 segment. I don't trust those things. I, I think the naked eye is good enough. And dart players play in front of dartboards so much. They know when a dartboard's straight. Machines are smarter than humans, Paul. You know this. Nah, but humans invent the machines. It is a clash of styles. I know we've said that already today with Ricky Evans and Andrew Gilding, but yet again, Mickey doing something to get here. It's been a bit of a tumultuous couple of years for him. He had a, a nightmare time of it at Ali Pali. He got his first win at Ali Pali last year. But as far as Dirk's concerned, this has been a nice progression in. 2022 couple of wins on the floor that's why he's ranked, ranked so highly number four seed yeah the highest seed not to be put on the main stage now depending on his ego he could see this as a well why am i not on the main stage I'm, I'm a high seed or he might just say do you know what let the other guys just shoulder the pressure i'll just go down here and do my thing well paul if he was thinking that he might be thankful now because the two seeds that are higher than him have already played two of them and have already been beaten. The number one seed, Damon Hetter, the number three seed, Nathan Aspinall. There you go. It's all good, Dirk. I read about Mickey, though. It's a great nickname, the Cyclone, but considering how he plays the game, he's more of a stiff breeze. Yeah. Or maybe just a, a little bit of a ruffle through the leaves on the trees. Doesn't quite roll off the tongue as well, does it? No. Can he roll off this finish? And pile some more pressure on one of the top seeds in this tournament. Oh dear. Now, 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 now. 
That was a bit greedy, wasn't it, Mickey? Should have gone for the 15 for Bull. No shot at the outer ring for Dirk, which gives Mansell a shot at his plan B double. Plan B is double 10. And he can brush it off the barrel and into the bed. Just like that for a 1 0 lead and a break of throw. By the way, I've just had it confirmed by a PDC official that in the scenario we discussed at the start of the match, that the referee would make the final call. Ah, well, there you go. We've got some great referees in the game these days. Russ doesn't need any introduction. We've had Charlie Corstafine this afternoon, the likes of Kirk Bevins. And others like George Noble on the main stage, doing a fantastic job as usual. Yeah, brilliant job. I just saw him out of the back and it's for a comfort break. And put George Noble was there noting down loads of numbers and different things. I thought, what's he doing? Looks important. Yeah, it was the order for the curry in between sessions for him and the other officials. Why did they ask George to do that? Has he not got enough on his plate already? But Right, Mansell seems to be hungry today and his knife and fork are big enough to handle the big aubergineus. Yeah, spicy start from Mickey Mansell. And we are seeing some shocks here in Minehead. We've lost the number one seed, we've lost the number three seed and the number four seed here is in early peril against the man seeded 61st for this tournament. Looks like it should be the other way around on the evidence so far. Yeah, this is not following the script. But then again, Mickey Mansell has been ripping up scripts for about 10 years. Well, this would be an excellent leg of arrow slinging from the Northern Irish ace. Not the B, but it will be back against the man who lost his last two first round matches in players championship events leading up to this one he has done bits in between the end of the players championship series and now but I'm sure that losing to Steve Lennon and Danny Baggish in the first round of those two tournaments didn't do his confidence any good and this one won't be doing him any good either because he's 2-0 down he's the man nicknamed the Titan but then who calls him that? Seriously, we all call him Dirk or the Aubergineus and the Titan is almost like his third nickname. Yeah, DVD is my go-to for... Fourth then. Van Dyve and Voda. We would hope to replay the first couple of legs because they've both gone the way of Michael Mansell. That's been a great season for Dirk though. Runner-up to Damon Hetter back in Players' Championship 26 champion of players championship 18 another runner-up in players championship 16 to michael smith and he won in pc 12 as well incredible really when you think about what he hadn't done up until the beginning of 2021 when he got his first one against martin clearmacher in germany yeah super well two or three years it's been for dirk hasn't it he's really emerged as one of the top tungsten tossers. And he leaves himself the top finish as he tries to get some kind of hold in this game. Mansell's got to move. Well, he didn't. He gambled on the 16. It paid off. It actually puts him in a really good position if Dirk doesn't hit this. Or a brilliant 1-6-4 from Adrian Lewis. Van Dijvenberder is not going to get in on the act. This could, as good as crush him early on, this would be another break. It would put Mansell 3 up. And throwing for a 4-0 lead. It's a decent guide as well for that treble 19. Well, you know the rest. Bullseye. 17, oh, sorry, 18 that was a big miss. Didn't really scare it at all. Dirk is clinging on. 
but to his credit, that's the biggest start of his match so far. And he knew for a fact that Mansell was going to go four for tops. And every now and again, we get this evidence that Dirk needs to be a little bit more fired up on a stage match. He has almost mastered something that he was never any good at. And that was playing in the placid leisure centres of Barnsley and Wigan. And in figuring that out, has he maybe lost a little something from his stage game or has he just found a different way of doing it? It took him literally years to have a deep run, didn't it, in those tournaments. He was almost infamous for one shot in a World Championship match against Raymond van Barneveld. Uh, Van Dijven Rode, well, he's better known now as a top darts player himself. Definitely one of my favourite players to watch because technically he's excellent. He's got a really good outlook on life and talent, philosophy. And for someone who speaks English as their second language, he speaks so eloquently as well. Yeah, and very honestly, I think, whenever you hear from Dirk van Dijvenboer, it's a very honest assessment. Do you know any Dutch people who aren't honest? I think there are one or two that can be pragmatic, shall we say, during post-match interviews. Like? Michael van Gerwen, for one. Because he maybe has to be, being yeah. the, the face of a generation. Honest about his own performance, but yeah, he, he knows how to play a trick or two. To put pressure on opponents, etc., that the... the straight out of the Phil Taylor playbook. Yeah, we heard a lot about that playbook in the John Part interview with Dan Dawson. It's part of the Dart Show podcast and the Legend series. Yeah, great story. Worth a, a watch or a listen, that is. By the way, Dimitri Vandenberg has just avoided a scare against Martin Lukeman. He won it 6-5 over on the main stage. Another tasty game. Mansell will be looking at the bullseye at the start of the visit this time. He might even be looking at it at the end. He'll be hoping that he is. And he does. And this is a juicy little bumper. Oh, he, he should have stayed where he was. And couldn't bounce it off the barrel. And now what does Dirk do? He could start on the ball himself. Does. Tops and tops. Oh. You can see what he was trying to do. Trying to sneak it underneath and he just ran out of space. It's double 12 for Mickey. And the lead is two once again. Dirk's not the only one with a little bit of vigour. Next game on this streaming board is my match of the day, by the way. Ryan Searle against Mervyn King. I do love watching Mervyn. I wonder Mervyn. why. You love a Merv game, don't you? Oh, absolutely brilliant. The best player to watch. Over on the main stage, Danny Knopper and Simon Whitlock preparing for battle. Yeah, that's a really interesting game. You know, I thought the, the surname Knoppert was quite... Unusual, and I didn't realize that the Dutch keeper was called Knoppert as well. Not as resplendent as Danny's regrowth of his bonnet, and he's going for the Minehead double this year, isn't he? Yeah, UK Open and the Players' Championship finals double. And I wouldn't be surprised if he takes it. And don't forget, though, it's a tough wow. ask based on how Simon Whitlock performed at the Grand Slam, beaten by Barney, of course, but averaging in three figures in defeat. Yeah, Whitlock did very little wrong. He's in a good place at the moment, Simon. And Dirk is trying to improve his situation with what he does better than most. We talked a little bit earlier today about Dirk and his likelihood of hitting 180s. He stands, with the exception of Justin Smith, in place championships, head and shoulders above anybody else, in the likelihood column of hitting maxes. How about bullseyes? Was an aggressive dart, wasn't it? You could see the aggression etched on the face of DVD. 
Got to come back and clean up. There was maybe an argument not to even go for the ball. Just goes to show how aggressive he is. Double four. The lead is won once again. And you're starting to think that maybe this game is going to be all about how well Mansell can palm off Dirk when he's holding his throw here. He wants to just complete a textbook display now, doesn't he? Get the break as early as possible and then just win your own legs. Now just for all of you stat fans out there, 30 players championships this year and just a couple of columns to go through. There were four players who played more than 100 games in players' championships this year. Rob Cross, Dave Chisnell, Luke Humphreys, and Damon Hetter played the most at 114. Quite incredible. But the 180 charts, I'm not going to do the Tony Blackburn jingle. There were four players who got more than 300 maxes. And they were so much better than everybody else, considering the difference between Dirk in fourth position and the next person on the list, Martin Schindler, was 39 180s. You had Dirk, Humphreys, Hetter. Who was the number one in 180s in the PCs this year? Back to the top of the charts. Are you asking me? Yeah. Chizzy. Chisnell it is. 345. Yeah, Dave Chisnell, one of the biggest maximum hitters in the last decade. Dirk van Dijvenbode, the point Paul was making earlier, the most likely to hit one. His ratio of 180s per leg is better than anybody else. Do you know what? He might need to pull one out. And you know what? One of the reasons why Dave Chisnell was top of those charts is because he was the only person in the top four of that list who played every single player's championship. Dirk only played 27. A 140, the next best thing in this scenario. He's hoping for a Mansell miss here. He's guaranteed a dart at least one double, provided he doesn't miss a big number, which he doesn't. So it is tops, and he remains on top. Oh, and you can see what it means to Mickey Mansell. And he's made of really tough stuff. Tell you what, you never forget your first meeting with a certain player. You just don't ever forget it. I remember the first time I played Dirk, and the one word that was going through my mind when I played him was presence. When he walked past you, it was as if a bouncer from a nightclub was just gliding past you. He just had this presence about him. But the first time I played Mickey, 2009 in Killarney, and he had an entourage there with him. And I thought, I don't even know who this guy is. And everybody was on his side. It's like I was playing against 15 people. But he was so good that day, until he played me. And I just found a way. But he's just got this steely quality that is very, very hard to dispose of. Well, the first time Dirk van Dijvenboda played Mickey Mantle, he lost 6-5. He went on to lose the first four matches, the first four meetings between the pair, culminating in a 6-0 whitewash defeat in 2018. They didn't then play again for three years. When they did, Dirk beat him 6-0, averaged just shy of 110 in the process. Head-to-head -head records just tell you a very interesting story sometimes. Currently stands at 5-2 in Mansell's favour, but Dirk van Dijvenboda has won two of the last three and has therefore won the lion's share since he's emerged as a top talent. This is better. That's more like it. Well, it should be the 19s here for Mansell. Not interested. We've got the four maximums in this game, both averaging in the mid-90s. It's been excellent quality. Highest checkout for both in the 70s. This is just shy of that. And it's still found. It's following that pattern still. 
Over to you, Mickey, once again. If you can protect, you'll re-establish that two-leg cushion to get yourself one leg away. It's like a game of chess and darts at the same time, this, isn't it? Oh, don't make darts more complicated than it already is. Do you know there is a sport that mixes chess and boxing? Yep. That's true. Yeah. So who's, who's really good at that? In, it's somebody in the darts world, isn't it? I'm not sure. I heard it outside of the darting circle that. Didn't know the two worlds would have collided. Where did you hear that? It was on TV, a TV programme that came across it. I think we might have been watching the same show. Anyway, Mickey Mansell is still the man who keeps putting Daryl Gurney in check, but not quite checkmates. Did I just say Daryl Gurney? Yes. That's who he would be playing if he wins this match against Dirk van Dijk. Daryl's thinking, I haven't, I'm not even playing in this game. He might be playing him tomorrow. You'd be playing one of them, Daryl. There's a lot of English representation in this section of the draw. You've got Ryan Searle, Mervyn King, which is next, like Merv said. Stephen Bunting, Jamie Hughes. The winner of those two games will play each other. So we're guaranteed at least one Englishman into the third round. Then you've got Anderson Clemens, Schindler van der Voort, Dobie Nentius. This is interesting, this little exchange here. Because Mansell's not going to go out, so Van Dijvenboden needs one treble for a dart of the bullseye to get that break that he's been vying for. Well, if he misses this and Mansell takes 80 with the last dart again, it's just the same as before. But running out of time with every leg, it doesn't happen. It's the mouse and the hare, or whatever two animals you got racing each other. One of them just keeps taking the lead again by a certain distance. It's just going to be one dart, though. Every time he's needed it, it has been there. But it's not this time. And now maybe it's the Titans' time. One dart, a double 16, could be a game changer. Dirk finally equalises, and what a good time to do it because now he's got the darts to take the lead. He certainly thinks it is a game changer. If there's any dart player who could just stare lasers through a wall, it's Dirk van Dijvenborder. That look, honestly, it's a bit like one of General Zod's cronies from Superman 2. This has been oddly entertaining. It hasn't been a classic, but give me two players averaging in the mid-90s all day long, and I'll enjoy watching it. And I don't think Mickey Mansell has ever done anything the easy way. In and out of the tour, getting his cards straight back, up and down experiences at Ali Pali, World Cups, a win on tour as well, the day that he played the best darts of his life, beating Adrian Lewis in the final but he hasn't been able to recreate that since. Adrian Lewis, we didn't mention during his last match when he was beaten by Keane Barry that he's actually twice a runner-up in this tournament, isn't he? A winner at Minehead at the UK Open but was beaten in back-to-back -back years 2014 and 2015. And not to mention the fact, and I should have mentioned it at the time, in fact, I mentioned it the, the game before, that Adrian Lewis at 33 in the world, now eliminated, can't overtake Raymond van Barneveld to be a seed at the Palace. So he will be playing in round one. By the way, it always seems to culminate in a thrilling final, this event. The last four years, 11-9, 11-9, 11-10, 11-10 in the tournament decider. Of course, the man that we've got next was in that final, the loser of the final last year, and he's playing the man who lost 11-10 the year before. Ryan Searle against Mervyn King. Double 16 for Dirk. Or two double eights. He's starting to show that he's got the endurance 
in this match. Mansell wasn't even on a finish there. But now Mansell needs two straight to survive. Yeah, if you are planning on watching the next game and you'd like a refreshment, make it quick. Yeah, well, it looks like that this game of cat and mouse, the mouse has been caught. I'm doing everything to avoid the Mickey Mouse. I was going to say which one's the mouse. Obviously Mickey, isn't it? But Dirk is purring at the moment. And Mansell was just doing such a good job of staying in front, but Dirk's got this incredible ability to find what he needs these days, no matter what the format. You don't put yourself in the same bracket that he's in without having a ridiculous amount of talent. He's not worried about his seeding for the world. He's currently projected to be number 14 at the worst. He did make the latter stages of the tournament two years ago. And he lost out to Gary Anderson, remember. He'd love to go one or two steps further when it comes to the darts in the new year. And we will once again crown the first world champion of the year. That's what we do. Yeah, and as Paul rightly said earlier, this tournament so often indicative as to who will be the most likely to pick up that crown. Just on that subject, actually, before we see the what could be the climax of this match. Do you think the Nathan Aspinall defeat today is a symptom of a really bruising week at the Grand Slam? Do you think maybe it came just a little bit too soon? I mean, it's possible. I'd have to see the match, I think, to give you a full and frank answer on that. But he has had a testing time of late. You know, he's got that injury, hasn't he? And the, the deeper he goes into tournaments, the more darts he's playing. It's a very busy time can Van Dijvenbo to get busy here or is there one last chance for Mickey Mansell to salvage the situation in this match I was questioning dart two but then I understood dart three just a really good calculation in the end to leave a two dart a minimum Mansell wants tops he's not getting a shot at it though now what do you suppose Dirk would do if he misses the treble 19 and gets the single. Will he go double double? It depends on what he does with his first shot here. Choices. Well, it was a half hearted attempt, really, at double double. And now, he's relying on a Mansell miss or him holding his own throw in the last leg. It'll have to be door number two. been an eventful afternoon and the clash of styles come down to this oh look what he's doing oh it's perfect an extraordinary time to put a 180 in 5-all and he says to Mickey follow that Mansell can't. Oh, don't go dry. Can't back it up. The door is open for Mickey Mansell. He's definitely preferred the treble 18 switch, hasn't he? As opposed to going into Rasma territory down in the 19s. Yeah, Priestley-esque. Opting for treble 18. But Mickey Mansell, well, maybe, just maybe, the race is run here. What he needs are errors from Dirk. And that's not an error. And we saw brilliant 1 2 8 from Andrew Gilding earlier. As good as you would ever see. Yeah, triple 18, triple 14, double 16. Dirk may just go treble 20 here. 
I think it's the right play. He thinks not. Now he's got the quandary. What quandary? Not interested in bothering the bullseye. But at this key moment of the match, a last leg decider. He's given himself three darts at double 16 instead. Mickey's put up one heck of a fight, but in the second half of this match, Dirk has been stronger. One left. And ultimately, Dirk is too strong for the Cyclone. He is titanic. He is a genius. And he's in the next round. He was made to work very, very hard for that. But that might just give him the impetus to go very, very deep in this tournament. He may need to be a bit more consistent at the start of legs. But at least he's into Saturday. Unfortunately for Mickey, he has to make his way back to Northern Ireland. As for us, we've got more action coming your way after a short break. And it is Ryan Searle against Mervyn King. I'm looking forward to it. You know that Murphy is.